Well, all right, guys. Hello and welcome to Chase's Workshop. This is kind of be a Chase's Talks episode um, with some updates I've got going on in the shop. I'm basically going to work on this guy while I do it, too. And what I'm doing here is this is a guitar that I've had probably for 20 years. And before I got it, the guy who had it before me probably had it for another 20 years. This is a really old RG570. Um, I bought it. Me and my buddy went in together. He, um, The guy that was selling it had this and an amp. And he wanted four hundred dollars for both of them, so I spent two hundred. He spent two hundred. I got a guitar. He got an amp. It was a pretty cool deal. I thought it was. But anyway, this is always my favorite guitar. But the one thing that I've always never done to it is give it a lot of TLC. Um, I basically just beat the crap out of this thing and then um, put it up. Um, so what I want to do here is I want to get this uh, fretboard re-leveled. And I don't know if you can tell in the video or not, but um, I've got divots all the way down to like the eighth fret here, right in there. Uh, eighth ninth fret um i've got divots where the strings i don't know playing it hard dropping it whatever but um it's time to re-level this guy now with that being said the way i've always done this was i always took just a regular level and tried to level this thing so i order, it ended up ordering me a new tool for the shop um and it's this guy right here i haven't even opened it yet i don't know um what it looks like i did order it on ebay um i'll try to find um, a link to it to where I can share it um, either on Amazon or eBay to where you can go buy one if you would like to. So here's this guy. I want to open it here to, um, and show you guys what it is. Like I said, I ain't even opened it yet. I don't even know if I got a freaking knife around here anywhere. I've got this. How about that? How would that work? So if you don't know what this is, this is actually a notched straight edge. Take this thing out here. Let's see, let's see what we got. Ooh, not, not too shabby. I've actually got a few other things from them. Uh, I've got uh, a rocker, I think they're called. And some of, some of the tools I ordered was from, from here. And I don't know if that's generic neck check guitar or what it is, but anyways, looks pretty, pretty legit. That, can you see that good? Looks like it's ground nicely. Um, it's aluminum. So, there you go. Alright, 25 and a half should be this one. There it is. Hmm. It's pretty nice. I, I like it. That's the 24. So, like I said, I think I spent like... What did I spend on this thing? Hold on, I'll look. See, fourteen ninety nine plus three dollars ninety nine shipping. So, yeah, not bad. And the ones on Stu Mac are like one hundred and three dollars, which I mean, I don't know how precise what the difference really is in them. I guess one may be ground by uh, Mox and or something. I don't know, but anyways, yeah, for fifteen. 16 bucks, not too bad. I think it's pretty nice, actually. So, anyways, what I want to do here is I want to take this guy, um, and we're going to try to level this, uh, at least level the fretboard where we can kind of get a good uh, starting point. And like I said, used to what I did was, which is probably, I mean, it would get you close, I guess, on a level fret level fretboard but it uh, wasn't ideal was I just took a regular straight edge and just tried to level it which if you think about it, it's kind of stupid because you're leveling the frets um, you're fixing the you know it'll get you close I guess but anyways this is I think a lot more uh, if I'm going to be doing this kind of stuff I think I should be as close to it. oh that's 20 24 As you can tell, it's pretty dang straight. It's a little, I've got a little bow right here, but um, you can see a little bit through there. I think the easiest way to do this too would be to set this guy up against a bright light. I can tell right around in here it's, uh, it's not flat. Alright, so now I should be back in business. Um, if you don't know, 
I didn't have this little guy right here, which I basically made this. I took a seven millimeter socket, uh, put it out there on a lathe, and, and turned it down uh, real thin, and then cut, shortened it. And then I just got this guy sitting here. It's either do that or wait, or go buy one from somewhere, and um, I figure I'd just make one. But anyways, so we're back to where I was doing this thing. I don't know if you can see it in the video or not, but looking at this guy here, it's got a little back bow right here, so I'm going to just heighten, I believe, or loosen, loosen. Heck, I don't know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna play with it and see. Uh, let's tighten it actually. <laughs> see where I'm at. Yeah, that's definitely making it worse. All right, let's go the other way with it. Let's draw it there. I actually started building a uh, a lemon fret or uh, neck leveling jig out in my shop. That's what it is. And the neck is. That's pretty damn good right there. Basically what I did was is I pulled back on the neck just a hair to get it to uh, level out. If that makes sense. If that makes sense why you would need the neck leveling jig. I think I'm going to get to work on that thing too. Try to get it. Try to get it where I want it. I see it with using that I can take this thing and basically bolt it down to where the neck is perfectly flat. That right there looks pretty dang good on there. I just kept messing with it until I basically loosened it, stretched the neck out a little bit, and then tightened it back up and it, it came in came in straight. So it's done pretty good. Like I was saying, I've I've got the um, the thing that I started in. I'll put I'll put a where I was messing with it right here, um, where you can see it. Maybe hopefully if I if I can do that. Um, but I'm working on a neck jig, kind of like the one that Stu Max sells. I just can't pay you know that much money for one uh, commercially. But anyway, so since I've kind of got that pretty pretty work pretty much where I want it. Uh, I'm close to it. Close enough. For government work. Um, I'm going to take this this fretboard off. So, what do y'all think about Gibson suing? Is it Kaiser guitars? Well, if maybe. Seems to me like they are uh, trying to sue everybody right now. If you've made a Les Paul style guitar, get ready. She might get a cease and desist letter from Gibson. I've always wondered a Gibson. I've always wondered a Les Paul, but I don't know. Now I'm kind of like, eh. And now that they've, I know who Kaiser is, they actually, their guitars look a lot nicer. Not knocking Gibson or nothing, but I'm just saying, man. Like I said, I've always wanted one, so I ain't, I ain't complaining. I'm just now we'll give them this on the whole ordeal. They're soon on the the, the V style one. They got a, like it looks like it's almost looks like a Jackson or or, or a, an ESP flying V uh, model. It looks absolutely nothing like. The flying V that Gibson done does makes. But with that being said, the uh, one that they designed that looks like like the Les Paul looks a lot like the Les Paul. I might try to put a picture of it right here where you can see what I'm talking about. But so I mean I could see it on that one. 
but on the flying V one, I don't, I don't see how that looks anything like the one that they've got. And according to, I think it's Jeff Kaiser. According to him, they've been making that model since like ten or twelve years before Gibson started making the flying V. So I don't know. I guess it's for the courts to decide. I just think it's kind of petty on Gibson's part. I don't know, maybe that's just me, but, I mean, you're this huge corporation and you're just going after these smaller guys just because, I don't know, are you running out of money or something, or, or what? I guess they're trying to trademark the, the letter V, I guess. I don't know. To me, like I said, it just seems petty. If you, if you, if you trusted your brand... You wouldn't be worried about it. But normally, what's going to happen with it is, is normally, you know, normal day, everyday person that just wants to buy a guitar, they're still probably going to, going to buy a Gibson, even though there was ne they're never going to know anything different happened between Gibson and Kaiser or whatever. So they probably won't have any issues with it. They probably, that's probably what they're betting on. I don't know if you follow the guitologist on uh, YouTube. It's a really good channel. I like I like him a lot. And uh, he's he's a lot more up to date on on it. I'm really wanting to get into doing some more pedals. Now a lot of you guys are interested in the building pedals and stuff. Uh, I actually ordered a book um, from Amazon called, uh, what's the name of it, Guitar Out Theory, something like that, I'll put a, put a link where you can see it right here, and I'm supposed to get it today, I really want to get into a lot of the electronic side of music, as far as building amps and pedals and things like that, and just, that's always interested me. Always. Well, the weather's been crazy here in Alabama. The other day it was 70 degrees, and then it snowed that night. If you've never been to Alabama, and you come here, don't, don't be surprised if you have to have, if you get here wearing shorts and you have to buy a dang sweatshirt before you leave. Because this place is nuts with the weather. I'm just ready for freaking summer. I'm tired of winter. I think when I get done too, I'm going to maybe redo the fretboard too. Put some more stain on it. Pretty it up a little bit. And -da. Okay, so I'm back now. Got my coffee. And uh, I actually sewed my B-Bender uh, string through saddle. So, this little, one of these little guys right here. Sold it on eBay. Cool. So, I had to do all that shipping. But anyways, now I'm back. And I'm going to finish this guy here. I think the last thing I was talking about when I left here was the that book that I ordered. That I'm hoping gets here today. Um... Like I said, it's uh, I'll, I hope I'll put a link in here where you can see it. But uh, it's basically just a theory behind building amp guitar amps and stuff like that. And I've got a buddy that um, I've been friends with for a long time, and uh, he actually built amps. Uh, he has a he has a YouTube page, but he's not he's not as active on it as he wants to be right now. Um, he's still kind of getting started, but it's called Clater Amps. I'll leave a link here too. We can go check him out. Um, build some killer amps and um, he is um, I talked to him about maybe collabing on a video to where we could uh, maybe uh, get together on it and um, I could show his shop he could go over some stuff uh, things like that just something to think would be kind of interesting maybe we could learn something along the way so I'll cover up that last pickup so I don't make too big of a mess there 
And normally, if you if you're doing this and you've got a uh, a nut up here, I know this one's got the uh, metal part for the uh, locking set locking uh, bridge. Uh, you don't put something here to where when you're running your sander, it doesn't knock that thing out. That'd be a bad bad day. Bad day. Anyway, so I got the guy. I got all this stuff done here. Um, I'm gonna mark the tops of this with that dang marker that I just had. What did I do with it? Oh, there it is. I'm just gonna mark the tops, and then I'm gonna take my file, which is this little guy here that I have modified. Huh with that and I'm gonna try to flatten these guys out and make them as flat as possible I got a permanent marker too this is an expo this one's probably not as good I might get my permanent one out next I got a blue one that uh does the same thing but it just helps you see where you're actually wearing at and where it keeps you from doing too much so there's that. It's kind of hard to see, but anyways, hoping you guys can see that. Um, I'm just going to kind of start and just lightly, I'm not even going to put any pressure down. I'm just going to let this thing kind of float on top of these frets uh, and give a little support here. I've got a neck support out there somewhere, but um, I don't know. It's kind of just for when you're not using uh, a body like this. But here we go. You can probably see a lot better now all the divots in these top uh, eight or so frets here. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine, ten, somewhere around there. Um, you can see the divots. And a lot of times that can be from playing, but normally what that's from is this thing falling and hitting something uh, and causing these divots from the, from the strings. So basically, I'm just going to wear this thing down until I lose those divots. See, I've lost, uh, this top one's kind of getting down to where it's just the, maybe on the B string. Um, and it's, it's, it's going. Um, the, prop, the thing is, if you don't want to stay in one area too much, if I stay up here and just keep going, I'm kind of neglecting these frets down here. So a lot of times what I'll do is, is I'll stay up here for a minute and then I'll come down here and just hit this a couple times and try to flatten it back out. And the reason why I mark them too, as you can tell right here, I've hit pretty much all this right here, there and there, but that one still hasn't hit, so that means that that fret's a little low. Um, all these other ones have hit really good up through here. So what I want to do now is I want to try to uh, work down here a little bit, just for that area. Really the best thing to use is uh, one of those large uh, sanding beams. I want to get one of those eventually. They're kind of expensive, but one that will reach the majority of the frets and you just kind of move it back and forth and it, it definitely flattens everything at the same time. Uh, the only thing about those is, is you have to have your neck perfectly straight. I wouldn't use one of those without using a some type of jig to make sure your neck is perfectly straight. Because if it's not, basically you're going to wear down these two frets if this neck has any kind of bow in it. One of those. Whereas this one's a little more forgiving. Um, I can run it back and forth, and I'm not going to, hopefully, not do do that. I had to run to my car right quick and get my other marker. I'm going to use this permanent marker instead. Um, and we're just going to mark these tops again. It is freezing cold outside here in Alabama. I am so ready for summer. Or heck, spring, anything. I don't care. One good thing about these big fat jumbo frets is that uh, you just 
pretty good bit to work with. This is my main one right here I'm trying to get down. I got a little spot there, um, and then three right there that I'm trying to get down to at least the point when I round this guy over. Like, I'm pretty sure when I round this one over, I'll get rid of those on that one, that one, that one, that one, uh, and even possibly that one, too. This one, I've just got to get those guys right there down. I'm going to try to get those down as much as I can. There's a cup, just a little notch right there. I am almost where I want to be. Alright, I think I can make it work. As you can tell right there, there's a little notch there and a little notch on the back side of it, but I think it'll be alright. Now, um, this one right here is a little bit off, but I think I'm going to leave it. I don't think I'm going to worry about it. I think it's close enough for government work. Uh, but now what I want to do is I'm going to remark these guys again. Now the goal here is to use this uh, round over file, I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's rounded over to the uh, thickness of the uh, wires here, or frets here. And I think I'm going to use the medium. The wide looks like it would work, but the medium looks like it fits it better. But basically what this is going to do is going to work the size down and crown the fret back. Now, but I don't want to go too far the reason I marked the frets again was to make sure that I'm not taking off any off of the top of the crown so I'm gonna try to keep it as uh, even if I can just keep a blue a little thin blue line across there it'll be ideal I'm just gonna take this guy I'm just gonna keep it straight it's number number one thing as you can tell there it's wearing the cutting the sides I'll keep doing that until we get that sucker back around crowned background crown there you go sounds like a sounds legit I might need to switch up to the bigger one I think that one's too too much. Uh, yeah, I definitely need to do the big one. And it's almost easy, as easy to do this with a just regular file too, which I'll show you. If you get one of the Stu Max one of these files right here um they've got a they're basically ground down where they're not sharp on the edges so you don't really and you can take one of these guys and eat one of these pretty good i got my oldest son now he has actually learned how to play drums he uh he um i bought him a drum set probably i don't know two or three years ago uh, it was kind of for him and for me. <laughs> I've always liked to beat around the drums. But he, uh, you know, I've tried to t teach him some things on it. But, man, it's hard trying to teach your own kids how to do something. Because they do not want to listen to Dad at all. They're like... And not to say that I know how to teach drums. I'm just saying I can get him, kind of maybe get him started on it. But I couldn't imagine trying to teach him how to play guitar. I mean, it'd be like... I don't know, it would just be, it'd be horrible. Um, but, anyways. So, he's playing drums now. Um, my middle son, I'm hoping I can get him to play guitar or bass. And I'm just praying that my 
youngest daughter. I'm just praying that she can maybe sing. Well, we have a band, man. We can have a band, man. I think it'd be fun anyways. And these don't have to be, like I said, these don't have to be perfect as you're doing it. Because a lot of the a lot of the roundness of it's gonna come out once you start polishing on these guys. And um, once you start polishing them, they actually start getting them more roundness and start cleaning up and you can start seeing the peak of them. So you don't have to have this thing perfectly round right here. And especially on these top ones because I was trying to save as much of this uh, fret as I can. That way, you know, they don't wear, I, I can maybe do this fret job a couple more times. Okay, so like I, like I was saying, you know, I don't want to take these down too far because I want to be able to get a couple more fret jobs out of this guy if I can. Maybe this thing will last another 20 years or 30 years, however old this thing is. Once I get out of my problem area, it gets a lot easier to do, too. So a lot of these guys are just flat. I just got to round the top over. And you just want to make sure you're getting the blue off or whatever color you're using on there. And make sure that, uh, but make sure once you get the blue off, you don't take too much off the top of it because you can get an unlevel thread that way. This thing will take it off quick. I think you gotta be careful down here, especially with a big horn like this, is just make sure that you're getting all the way to the edge there. Because if, if you see that, that right there is stopping me. I think again, too, this isn't rocket science. Although, I mean, you could make it rocket science if you want to, and it'd probably be a lot more ideal, but. Still, I've been doing it like this for years on some other guitars and the guitars that I build, and it's always worked pretty good. Alright, there we go. Now, what I like to do is, here's that, here's the uh, rocker I was telling you about, same as this one. I've had this for years, though, and that's the same brand that this came in. This all kind of came in as a set, this, this, and heck, I don't remember what else. I got this guy, too, but it's for a smaller, I think it came with that, too. It's for a smaller uh, fret wire. But it's basically the same thing. It's just a, just a crowning tool. And then I got these guys from, is it Hosco? Hosco? Yeah. They're files from the nut file for the nut. So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to take some sandpaper. Got some 400 grit right here. Kind of knock it down a little bit. Hit the side, hit the edges. Try to get rid of some of those teeth marks, if I can. And basically all I'm doing is I'm just kind of, I'm starting on the edge and just working my way up to the crown. I'm not going, I'm not trying to not go flat on top of it. I mean, you can a little bit, just got to get rid of some of the uh, file marks. Hit the side, hit the back side. You can see this. Hit the back side and then just kind of roll it up. And the higher grit you go, the uh, the more you can kind of hit the top. You're not really going to take off a lot. 
especially when we start getting to the polish when you start getting up to you know eight nine hundred thousand grit you're you're polishing you're starting to polish i don't know if you can tell or not in the, vi in the video but it's, you can tell how the frets are kind of kind of working that roundness back into the fret by hitting these sides and kind of rounding the top over Like I said, you put a dang microscope on it, it's probably not going to be rounded at all, but it's also, it's also not rocket science. I'd like to, I'd like to travel to one of the guitar centers and see their plaque, plaque machine. Is that pretty neat to watch? I can't remember the price on them things. I know they're, I'm sure they're well in the $100,000 range, but the funny thing is, by doing this, I know that I'm probably opening myself up to a bunch of ridicule by people that have been fretting, re -fret, doing this stuff for a living for their entire lives, which I always use that as a learning opportunity too, so. I'm doing something wrong, or if you, I'm sure I am, but I mean, just don't be a douche about it, just tell me, or if you think of a better way of doing it, let me know, we're all here to help each other, not break each other down, which I think a lot of that goes on nowadays, I know people will say a lot of stuff, yeah, a lot more on behind the computer screen than they will to your face. There we go. Now, before you jump to your next grit, just kind of wipe it down a little bit. Just to get rid of some of the 400 grit that we were just using. Oh, I don't know if y'all seen my new coffee cup or not. If I can show it to you without spilling my coffee. Muscle show sound. It's a studio that's actually it's actually in Sheffield, believe it or not. You know, you know, I don't know if y'all remember or not, but I did that uh, Taste Talks episode where I talked about I was going to go see uh, Eric Gales. Well, we went. I got video of it. I just ain't made another video on it yet. So maybe I'll get that out to you for long. You can see uh, me meeting him. Really cool guy. We were at the uh, show. We watched him and everything. Um, and of course, he always sets up to where you can come up there and talk to him. I ended up buying a CD and a pic and got my picture with him and everything else so i put a picture of me and him together me him and my wife are here it's kind of dark but i'm um, just dark where we were taking pictures at but uh you'll see it you'll see it really cool guy well anyway he was getting ready to leave and i was like let's swing right where we were at they had a uh, uh alleyway in the back and i was like hey we'll, we'll sneak out the back maybe we'll get to get back there and talk to him and you know, we did. We went back there, and uh, Eric Gales was actually <laughs> driving the van uh, that they they were driving. I think they were going to like South Carolina or something that night. Uh, but they they were driving like a big. It wasn't like a tour bus, but it was like a large uh, family van pulling a trailer. And the trailer had all their had all their equipment and stuff in it. And of course, me, I asked them, y'all need some help? And they're like, no, nah, we got it. And I'm sure they were probably like, oh my gosh, get away from me. But uh, they weren't. They were real cool. I met his wife. His wife, sweet as can be. Of course, my wife absolutely loved her. Um, and I'll put, I, when I do the video on that, I'll, I'll break down the parts. And with the other two bands that played with them, or some buddies I know, uh, we got a band called Abstract Theory. They played before, and 
So I got to see them. It was really cool. I think Rob Malone played too, but I can't remember. We had we didn't get to get over there before to see him in time. But he's a really good guitarist in, in my area. And I always see him at Counts Brothers, which is a local music store here when I take my son up there for drum lessons. And the guy that does the drum lessons for my son plays in a band called The Fiddle Worms. And they're from our area too. A uh, very cool band. I went and watched them. They did a show at a recorder studio here called The Nut House. And um, it's actually on YouTube. I'll put a link to it. You can go check it out. Pretty cool band. But the drummer for them is teaching my son how to play drums. Uh, very cool guy. Very cool guy. If you don't know about muscle shows, that's one thing about my area is, is we have a lot of music history. Fun fact, though, on my area, the reason why Muscle Shows really didn't turn into, I mean, it was a big hit recording studio at, at its time, but uh, the main reason why was because of Prohibition. You know, bands wanted to come in here and drink and do other things. That were highly illegal at the time, and even being alcohol being illegal here, everybody went up north to a place called Nashville, where they could get a beer and uh, any of the other things that they wanted to do that was illegal here. But still being that the area that we're in, uh, we still have that nostalgia, I guess. Now, a lot of the, a lot of people that come here to record, they usually just come here to, like, record one song. Um, Steven Tyler was here, heck, I don't know, probably three or four years ago. I'll try to find a picture, put it here where you can see that. And um, flew in, we got to airport. And uh, came in here, recorded like one or two songs, and left. And I don't even know if uh, I don't know if I know what song it is. Maybe we need to look it up. And see if I can find it on there or something. But uh, he he's coming here. I know like a lot of your country music stars have been in here, like that, just to record a couple songs and just to, just to say that they recorded that muscle shows. Uh, Muscle Shows, in Muscle Shows. Now there is two, uh, places, I know if you've ever heard of Muscle Shows, you've probably heard of Fame Recording Studios, um, and Rick Hall was the owner of that, and he actually owned, uh, there's a little divot right there, let me get that out, uh, he had the, uh, sound, the sound panel that's famous for my area, well he passed away about, about a year and a half, two years ago, I guess. And it was kind of, kind of sad. I don't know if you can see it or not, but I got a little divot right there. That one little divot will make a pain in my butt. If I don't fix it. That got it. Didn't take much. Didn't take much at all. Ooh. All right, there's uh that was twelve hundred. I went from four hundred twelve hundred. You could probably do eight hundred in between them, but I didn't. Now I'm gonna take some steel wool and just actually work the work a shine back into it, and then you'll be able to see. So I got a little divot right there. If you can see it or not. I think it's where I was using that smaller. Uh, actually, I'm positive that was from where I was using that smaller uh, side of my crowning file. There we go.
you can see how it polishes up pretty good just by using the steel wool once I get this done I'll take it out here and I'm gonna put it on my buffing wheel the biggest thing with the buffing wheel is heat the last thing you want to do is get these things red hot and then pop out of the fret or uh, they'll expand and contract and loosen in the fret slot and you just you basically just ruin the neck or you've brought a fret up higher than the rest of them and basically defeated the whole purpose of what you're trying to do here is leveling the frets so it's not necessary but I do like the way it puts a, it makes these frets pop basically they go from looking they look good there but once you hit that hit it with the buffing wheel makes it look good makes it look real good and it's very easy to do if you got a buffing wheel if you don't got a buffing wheel uh, use this and get you some polishing compound and polish it up it'll it'll polish up good just remember too when you're doing this as long as you kind of, you're going side to side like this you won't have any problems with uh, once you get the polishing it and being smooth to where um, it'll catch a string or something um, you know when I'm, when I'm doing the file this way I'm putting scratches this way and then the whole time I've been doing this I've been going trying to go this way to smooth those out and even if I do have a scratch it'll be going this way where maybe I want to affect the uh, string as much if that makes sense like I said I had this guitar for 20 years so finally this is the first time I have done anything to the fretboard on it I've tried a bunch of different guitars you know, I've got the Strat. I like it. I like the Telecasters. But man, it's just something about an Ibanez that I just, I really, I, I like. That right there is not too smooth. I'm to smooth it out a little bit. And if you're using, if you're doing like a $3,000 guitar, you can tape off the rest of it. This one's kind of is what we call it here, my beater guitar. They're just kind of if it gets a ding in it, I do, I do not care as long as it works and sounds good. My beater guitar, and the one that the uh, B bender's in, it's kind of the same thing. It's been my project guitar, even though it was my first guitar I ever built. I still like to use it for my experiments, aka the B-Bender. I'm really thinking about buying a, maybe a cheap telly, like a Squire or something like that, and putting a B-Bender in it, I mean a G-Bender. So I know a lot of you guys like the, like the G-Benders, I never played a G-Bender, and looking back, you know, when I, when I did that B bender, I'd never played one before. I just always wanted one. And so when I made it, uh, looking back now, I think I would like a G bender better. So I might try that. Another series of videos on the G bender. All right. So there we go. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take it out here, and I'm going to hit it on the buffing wheel and bring it back in here. So now I've got the uh, frets polished up on the uh, polishing wheel outside. As you can tell, they've got a good shine to them now. They should be good to go. Let's do an overall inspection of them. Make sure they're good. I'm fixing to pull all this tape off now. Guys, that's pretty much it for this video. I just wanted to, uh, I was going to do this without making a video, but I figured it was a good time to, I don't know, talk to you guys. 
and maybe uh, show you how I do this when I have to redo my frets. Now, one cool trick you can do that I didn't do here apparently was that before you put all this on here, take you a piece of tape and run it right down this back side and right down this side here. So when you get done, you can just pull that tape and all these will come off. I didn't do that, as you can tell. I'm having to pull each of these off individually. And it's kind of a pain in the butt. But it is what it is, I guess. And like I said, this is, this is the first time in a while since I've done one of these. But getting all this stuff off is probably the hardest part of the whole whole deal here. As always, guys, if you have any questions about any of this stuff that I'm doing, let me know. I love helping you guys out with things. And uh, also, just remember to help me out as well. If you see something I'm doing that's easier to, to do than the way I'm doing it, I'd appreciate it. So there we go. I've got the frets. They're back good now. If you can see them. There's not any divots. They're all clean. They're all good to go. There you go. Now, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to restring this guy. Uh, I'm going to probably I'm 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 going to order some maybe get some uh, oil for the fretboard to redo this. I kind of sanded these down a little bit, cleaned them up because they were in bad shape as well. And uh, I might put some of that on here and then uh, restrain this guy. I'm going to do a video uh, playing this thing too. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this little chase, chase talks and going through how I do a fret job on a guitar. Um, but like I said, if you have any questions about any of this stuff, guys, leave it in the link below. Send me an email, whatever you want to do. Um, I'll be glad to help you out and I'll be glad for any of you guys to help me out. Um, thanks for watching the video, guys. If you enjoyed it, give me a like. If you liked it, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.